Did you know that ever since the introduction of vaccines, many deadly diseases have decreased dramatically? Yeah, since the pre-vaccine era, it seems that the rate of deadly diseases has actually gone down maybe 72%. However, infectious diseases such as measles has been making a comeback in recent years after almost being eradicated here in America. And in fact, it's not the law in every state to be vaccinated. So if it's not the law to be vaccinated, what would happen if people just stopped receiving vaccines? So throughout the years, an anti-vaccine movement has been growing and many parents have been refusing to vaccinate their kids. Researchers believe that this is the cause of many recent outbreaks. The parents' refusal to get their children vaccinated seems to be correlated directly to the anti-vaccine movement. The anti-vaccine movement is all about using natural remedies to cure yourself or opting out of vaccines to not contract other diseases such as autism. So believe it or not, these people do believe that autism is caused by vaccines. And a study conducted by Dr. Wakefield in 1998 concluded that autism in his patients was caused by the MMR vaccine. The problem with his research is that he only used full patients. A report claims that he published his findings too soon. Soon after his paper was published, public panic spread throughout, and thus an increase of these diseases occurred. This claim was made 17 years ago, and since then, there have been numerous studies done in which researchers can find no link of vaccines being the cause of autism. But even with the numerous studies done to disprove Dr. Wakefield's study, the anti-vaccine movement still seems to be in full effect. You see, humans have a very poor risk perception, which means that we cannot determine how risky something might actually be. It is easier for us to discredit vaccines on the basis of mere possibility that vaccines might cause autism and risk getting the measles because we are simply not afraid of the measles. We have lived in a world where measles is almost non-existent. It is the same way we are not deathly afraid of dinosaurs that roamed the earth millions of years ago. We have never seen it or perceived how dangerous it actually is. You may have heard of the recent outbreak of measles and other illnesses in the last couple of months. It's quite strange to be hearing this because these are preventable diseases. That's if you get vaccinated. Measles is a disease that feels and sounds to be far from us, but if people are not vaccinated, it's highly contagious. It is among the leading causes of children's death. In 2013, there were more than 145,000 measles deaths globally, about 16 deaths every hour. In 1980, before the widespread vaccination, measles caused an estimated 2.6 million deaths each year. Yet despite the vaccine's availability, it is still the leading cause of children's death. So let's put it this way, instead of having to travel out of the country or to be exposed to someone who got measles with a link to international travel, you can get measles just by going to a ball game, a movie theater, or to Disneyland. A current outbreak of measles in Disneyland has spread throughout the United States. Within Arizona, a handful of cases have popped up. Specifically, a three-year-old patient receiving chemotherapy for leukemia in Phoenix Children's East Valley Center was exposed to measles. This exposure came from a woman who had been infected with measles in Disneyland, whom is estimated to have exposed up to 195 children in the same hospital. Unfortunately, the Disneyland measles outbreak was traced back to one unvaccinated child. Their single exposure could have affected over 3,000 individuals. Other outbreaks have seen that the majority of people exposed were not vaccinated or had not been vaccinated properly. This outbreak alone was very infectious, and it does not help when high-profile people such as model and actress Jenny McCarthy contribute to the hysteria. McCarthy had previously made the claim that she had cured her son's autism with diet and vitamins and has made her stance clear that vaccines can trigger autism. Recently, however, she admitted that her son never had autism and was selling fear into mothers and others. Some experts have looked into her case and suggest her son was misdiagnosed, although McCarthy has no comment on the possibility of her son's misdiagnosis. McCarthy claims she is more in the gray area of the topic of vaccines and is not just anti-vaccine. However, this does not mean that her feeding a parent's fear that the children are at risk is not dangerous. 
Being as high profile as her in the midst of this whole dilemma definitely has an influence on parents and their decisions. And so with the risk of becoming infected with measles rises, so does the risk of being infected with other deadly diseases. New studies have presented that when the immune system is infected with measles, it puts your system into a state of amnesia for up to three years after the infection. This leaves your body defenseless to a whole host of other diseases. It was previously thought that this state of amnesia was short term and could last a couple of weeks or months. Every infection your body had ever gotten would have been forgotten by any antibodies and would leave you susceptible to those illnesses and could potentially be worse than the last time you were infected. Receiving vaccines is not only helping you short term and long term by also protecting you from those other potentially fatal diseases, but you're also protecting others. You've heard us talking about herd immunity, but what really is it? Herd immunity is the idea that the group, or the herd, can avoid exposure to a disease by ensuring that enough people are immune so that no change of transmission can be established. This protects everyone and is incredibly important to those who are too young or too sick to be vaccinated. Everyone that can get vaccinated should get vaccinated, not only to protect themselves, but to protect others that can't. We really should fear this problem with measles and treat it seriously. We should ask ourselves how we can get hesitant people to get vaccinated. Is the slightest possibility that there's a link between vaccines and autism really worth getting measles? Should we be dealing with this in the 21st century? We do not live in the pre-vaccine era anymore. We can and should stop this. It's just a matter whether the herd wants to help stop spreading infection. Thank you.